Hello guys, so uh, coming back to our series of videos, I have unfortunately I have to stop for a little bit of time because I have to move to another country actually, uh, but good news, now I'm back. So uh, on today's tutorial, I'm going to talk about uh, reverse debugging. We're going now to learn how we can debug in Eclipse CDT or in, on Linux, how to debug in the opposite direction, right? Not the only normal debugging that you go from top to down, but now going up. I'm going to switch now back to the board and uh, we keep the normal format where we talk a little bit in front of camera just to talk to you guys, show the board and then we go to the to the lab to do something on the computer and show you guys how actually to do. Okay? Hope you guys enjoyed. It's really nice for me to come back again to do those videos and let's start it. Okay guys, so now let's talk a little bit about reverse debugging. Okay, uh, I'm here I just have a normal C code that uh, just print hello world with some, uh, with some value, which is in the case A. And uh, what we are interested now, okay, we are interested now in do reverse debugging. So normally when we debug this piece of software or any C code per se or C++ code, you are interested in marking breakpoints, okay, which are places where the where you can imagine that the CPU will stop, okay, and from that point on we can start to analyze your code, okay. Uh, what we're going to talk now is about how to use reverse debugging CDT in Eclipse for Linux, okay. On Windows this can change a little bit. Probably we need to use a, a paid tool like in Visual Studio, uh, some like expensive version i don't know i really don't know how to do that on windows now and uh, if you guys know please comment me on how to do that uh, so uh, imagine that we debug this piece of code right and we mark this part here as our breakpoint so when the cpu is start to interpret this machine code interpret this code he's going to stop at this point here right uh, every time that we step over or press shift f6 we're going to read one line from top to down, okay, line by line until the end of the program, okay. What we are interested in now is that with the reverse debugging enabled, we can go back in time, okay. We can go on this direction here, uh, and it's really useful because, for instance, imagine that you have uh, that you want to track down how a variable is changing in time or how a for loop is uh, is working. So it's really interesting that you can debug on this direction. And on this direction as well, right? Uh, during the labs, I, uh, I'm going to show uh, some details about how to do that on Ubuntu. And actually, on Ubuntu 16, we need to enable the static, uh, the stack, the static option on the linker. So, uh, well, without more details, I think I will show more in the lab. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed, and let's go to the lab and show how we can do this on Eclipse. Okay? See you guys. Okay, guys. So in this lab, we're going to see how to do reverse debugging. Okay, we have here just a simple C program. Okay, uh, let me just run and show to you guys what it does. Let me run. So we just give a string, and he convert to something else. Okay, imagine that is like encrypting uh, some string. Okay, so what we're going to do now? Uh, let's debug. Okay, we come here and on the bug configuration here, we're going to enable this option here, enable reverse debugging, okay, click the bug. And uh, the first thing, if I press F6 or I click here on uh, step over, right, step over again, let me just give a string. It's more or less the normal kind of debugging that we see. Okay, we uh, we can click twice here, sorry, here to mark a breakpoint, but uh, automatically CDT is start the program at the first line of main, right? So F6, we go down, but the new thing is like, what happens if I press Shift F6? So you can observe that you can go backwards, okay? And also the variables are going to update accordingly. So if I go to, for instance, the second, uh, let me just see here, what's the variable? Yes. So let's go and run three times this for loop. Okay. We see here that uh, this variable has a value of three. But if we go and do shift F6 and also observe here, 
You see? We can see that the variable is now decrementing, which is really useful here in for loops that, uh, for instance, we we see that something happened, but we want to go back one iteration before to see, okay, what really changed? You can just press Shift F6 and you can go back in time, okay? So, uh, besides that, uh, besides, let me just close here and also terminate, okay? So, beside this point here that we have to configure, oh, sorry, not yet, uh, debug, debug configuration. So, beside this point here where we have to enable reverse debugging to have this, uh, in Ubuntu 16, this feature does not work that well and we need to compile the program statically, which means we going to merge all the libraries that this program uses and uh, and merge into a single executable, okay? So no dynamic libraries to have in this feature enable. So to to configure this, we just come here and in the properties of the project and uh, and build and settings. In the linker general general tab, we can see this option here, okay? We just make sure that it's marked, okay? If it's if you are in the using Ubuntu 16. So Actually, that's it, guys. It's not too much, but it's a nice feature to have because uh, it allows us to feel more, to to analyze analyze better our software. Okay, so hope you guys enjoyed, and uh, see you guys in the next video. Bye bye.